I do the structure for methanoic acid, which is the carboxylic acid having, having only one hydrogen. I can draw the displayed formula of this methanoic acid in this manner. H C O O H. Now, if I go to the next level, I mean carboxylic acid with two carbon atoms, First, I can do the carboxylic acid functional group like this. And in the methanoic acid, we have one hydrogen attached to the functional group. This time I can add another CH3, one CH3 group. So formula is going to be CH3, COOH. And the name of this compound is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. Uh, you know, if a compound has three carbon atoms, it is going to be propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. Now the propanoic acid, again, can be drawn in this manner. COOH. Propanoic acid means three carbon. One carbon is already included from carboxylic acid. And two more carbon atoms should be added. C, C, CH3, CH2. Now this formula can be written, the structural formula of propanoic acid at CH3, CH2, COOH. Likewise, I can list down different types of carboxylic acid according to their carbon atoms. Now, <coughs> I think I can finish the next one also. It is butanoic acid. When it comes to butanoic acid, you know that it has four carbon atoms, butanoic acid. I can show the butanoic acid structural formula, CH3. In propanoic acid, we have one, two, three carbon. So butanoic acid has well four carbon. So I write CH3, CH2, CH2, and COOH. And partly displayed formula can be shown as CH3. This is not the full displayed formula. CH3, CH2, CH2. And at the end, I can write the functional group COOH. This is how I can introduce to you the very basic naming system and construction of the first four carboxylic acids uh, with partly displayed formula as well. You must know how to construct these things if you want to do a carboxylic acid question well in a paper. Now let's talk about uh, some other aspect of carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids, <coughs> they are weak acids. Carboxylic acids are weak acids. What is the meaning of weak acid? We say carboxylic acids are weak acids because of a very, very special property of them. The property is they ionize. They ionize in water. I'll write H2O. We say incompletely. incompletely, or we can say partially, anything is okay, incomplete or partially. But how are we going to show the incomplete or partial ionization of carboxylic acids? If I take methanoic acid, H-C-O-O-H. If you add in H2O, 
AQ means water, you added water. The hydrogen over here in the carboxylic acid functional group breaks off, producing H+. And the remaining part of the molecule, now I have written the H+, coming from here. The rest of the part is going to remain as it is in this manner. In carboxylic acid, we have OH, but when hydrogen goes out, it becomes negatively charged oxygen. And this is called, because it is coming from methanoic acid, methanoate. Methanoate. <clears throat> Actually, methanoate ion. Because this carboxylic acid, methanoic acid, is going to ionize partially, we show it with a reversible arrow. Incomplete dissociation. This is the first one. The dissociation of methanoic acid incompletely producing hydrogen ions. If I go to the second one, second one is ethanoic acid. CH3, COOH. If you add into water, it dissociates incompletely or partially, again producing hydrogen ion. And then the remaining part of the molecule is written as CH3, CO, O minus. What's the name of this? Ethanoid And to do practice, we will go to the third one also. CH3. Between CH3 and functional group carboxylic acid, I will add CH2. COOH. In water. It is also going to dissociate, producing H plus ion. And the carboxylate ion produced is CH3, CH2, COO minus. This is propanoate. I think I won't discuss this incomplete dissociation idea of carboxylic acid using a fourth compound, which is quite uh, easy to understand. But if you don't look at it carefully, you get nothing out of it. Uh, to explain this better, I will draw the functional group of carboxylic acid in its uh, displayed manner. This is a carboxylic acid functional group. Let's say on the other side, there's another carboxylic acid functional group. There are compounds where there are two carboxylic acids also in the same molecule. If I assume that in the middle we have CH2 part, <clears throat> this is a three carbon compound having two functional groups of the same functional group twice carboxylic acid. So we call this prop, prop because there are three carbon atoms. Prop N, because for the smooth flow in pronunciation, in the pronouncing, we have N part, prop N. And because we have two carboxylic acid, we call it dioic acid. Prop N dioic acid. This prop N dioic acid also, if you add in H2O, can behave in the same way. But only difference is because this has two carboxylic acid. The hydrogen on the left hand side, CWOH, and the hydrogen on the right hand, CWOH, they both come out as 2H. And the product remaining is C O O minus CH2 C O O minus. I can do the display form, uh, structural formula for this as COO minus, in the middle we have CH2, on the right hand side we have COO minus. What do you think is the name for this? 
problem die with ion. Problem die with ion. Uh, to practice, of course, you have to copy down this. Only when you copy down this, uh, while thinking, you know, how exactly this happens, you can get a clear idea as to how a carboxylic acid molecule acts as a weak acid. We'll go to the next part of this carboxylic acid lesson. Uh, it is to talk about reactions of carboxylic acid. There are five reactions we talk about. Reaction with reactive metals, reaction with carbonates, reaction with alkalis. They are also called neutralization reactions. Reaction with indicators, reaction with alcohols, esterification reactions. So this esterification reaction comes in alcohols as well. Before we start the lesson, for these five reactions, I have a small table. This table shows in the summary what happens in each and every reaction listed over here. In the first column, we have reagent carboxylic acid. How are carboxylic acids reacting with reagent two? <clears throat> Reactive metal, metal carbonates, alkalis, indicators, and alcohols. Just to summarize, when carboxylic acids react with reactive metals, we get a metal salt and hydrogen gas. We know that metals always react with acids producing hydrogen gas. Metal salt is formed. When a carboxylic acid react with metal carbonate, you know carbonates react with carboxylic acids or acids giving carbon dioxide. So products are again a metal salt, carbon dioxide, and water. However, when a carboxylic acid react with alkali, there are neutralization reaction, salt and water are produced. I don't have any such products for indicators because we have discussed about color changes. However, with alcohols, carboxylic acids react with alcohols producing esters and water, they are called esterification reactions. I have a clear idea about this. The very first reaction of carboxylic acids is a reaction with reactive metals. And for this uh, reactive metals, uh, we take group one or group two metals because those are the most reactive metals in the periodic table, group one and group two. Here for the discussion I have taken, sodium, a group one metal, calcium, a group two metal. The carboxylic acid over here is ethanoic acid. Let's write the word acid also. And the second one is methanoic acid here. Earlier, at the beginning, we saw how carboxylic acids act as acids in which hydrogen ions go out. This hydrogen goes out as H plus. And from ethanoic acid, you get ethanoate, CH3, COO minus. Now the reaction happens with sodium. So what happens is ethanoic acid first produces ethanoid ion and sodium reacts with it, producing a compound called sodium ethanoate. sodium ethanoid and hydrogen gas is produced. These hydrogen are coming from carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid has only one hydrogen, but in the hydrogen there are two H. So I had to get two carboxylic acid to get two hydrogen to produce one hydrogen molecule. And then sodium ethanoid also should be two amount of sodium is also two. That's a balanced chemical equation. Next one is also pretty much similar, except for a small difference. 
Again, this is methanoic acid. Methanoic acid has COOH. This hydrogen goes out. Remember, you have a hydrogen on the left-hand side also. This hydrogen will not go out. This will not go out. What goes out is a hydrogen attached to COOH. Hydrogen attached to oxygen. So initially, this methanoic acid molecule goes to H C O O minus. This is methanoid ion. Methanoid ion is going to make a salty calcium. Calcium two plus. Calcium is a group two element having valency two. Because calcium has valency two and methanoid ion has valency one, there are two methanoid ions reacting with calcium. Plus hydrogen ion is produced. I think uh, because two hydrogen are needed to make H2, two hydrogen are needed from eth methanoic acid. So two methanoic acid will participate in the reaction. This is a balanced chemical equation. And the product over here is calcium methanoid, uh, calcium ethanoid, I'm sorry, calcium ethanoid. If you do this reaction in the laboratory, you can take a beaker and take the acid into the beaker. I'll just write acid. We know that we are dis discussing about carboxylic acid. If you add uh, a piece of metal, you can see the metal moving down. This is a metal. The reaction produces hydrogen gas. So you will see formation of gas bubbles. If gas bubbles are produced, we call it an effervescence. We can see an effervescence during the reaction. Let's try to figure out how this uh, reaction of carboxylic acid occur with magnesium. Uh, there are two acids. There's a difference between the acid given over here and down there. The difference is this. In the first compound, CH3, CH2, COOH, only one hydrogen is there, acidic hydrogen. In the second compound, there's one acidic hydrogen on the right-hand side and another acidic hydrogen on the left-hand side. In the reaction with magnesium, when this hydrogen goes out, this is one, two, three propanoic acid. Propanoic acid produces propanoid ion. You are familiar with the name and system now. CH3, CH2, COO minus propanoid. When the propanoid ion reacted magnesium, magnesium is group two, its valence is two. So I write plus two because valence is two, propanoid ion come twice. Plus hydrogen will be released. To balance this, I will take two propanoic acid. The name of the salt produced here is magnesium propanoid. Magnesium propanoid. Let's move on to the next one. Now this carboxylic acid has two, two, two carboxylic acid functions. So if these two hydrogen go out of the system, then we have O, O, C, CH2, C, O, O minus. Here also one minus. This compound is one, two, three. Propen dioic. Propen dioic acid, because there are two carboxylic acid groups. 
it reacts with magnesium. Magnesium is having magnesium two plus in the compound. And this anion has two minus. So the compound is magnesium Magnesium, propen, dioid, plus hydrogen gas is produced. We don't have to do anything. No, we have to multiply uh, nothing, nothing. This is just right. Please have a clear idea as to how carboxylic acids participate in reactions with metals. Let's start discussing the reaction of carboxylic acids with carbonates. According to the very first notes we took down, do you remember what happens in carboxylic acid react with carbonates? They produce carbon dioxide, water, and metal salt. We can discuss this reaction using three reactions. Let me see the first compound over here is ethanoic acid. Second compound here is methanoic acid. And third compound is propanoic acid. In the first one, we use sodium carbonate, second one, calcium carbonate, third one, potassium carbonate. In all these reactions, carbon dioxide is produced. What is also produced? These are facts you must remember. And now come to salt. Because sodium carbonate reacts with ethanoic acid. Here we get, you can figure out now, what is the salt produce? What's the name of this? Sodium ethanoid. Sodium ethanoid. Wonderful. Likewise. Can you tell me the formula of the salt produced here before I write it? C H. The name? Calcium methanoid. Calcium methanoid. I can write the formula for calcium methanoid now. Calcium, I'll write calcium in front. H C O O minus, because calcium valence is two, I write two over here. And to balance, I will add two methanoic acid, um, H2, yeah, that's it. In the third one, carbon dioxide, water, and a salt is formed when propanoic acid reacts with potassium carbonate. Can you give a try? What's a salt produced here? Potassium pro, uh, propanoid. Potassium propanoid. Yeah, just great. Potassium propanoid. Let me draw the structure for it. I can write K at the beginning. Propanoid part, CH3, CH2, COO minus. Uh, because we have K2 over here, I will add two in front of the salt. 
and then the carboxylic acid part is multiplied by two. So I add two over here. That's it. Uh, I think I had to balance the first one also in the same manner because we have two sodium here on the left hand side in sodium carbonate, sodium two. I will multiply the salt, sodium ethanoic by two. Then ethanoic part becomes two. So ethanoic acid is also multiplied by two. This way we can balance, we can write the balance equation for, uh, for a chemical change happening between carboxylic acid and uh, any given carbon. These things should be written by you know, yourself in order to gain the skill of writing these formulae in exams. Similar to the reaction between carboxylic acids and reactive metals, we discussed under the reaction number one. Over here also, when carboxylic acids are reacted with an acid, in this diagram, I have shown acid here. And a carbonate added into the acid goes down to the bottom of it and begin to react. You can see carbon dioxide gas coming out. This is carbon dioxide effervescence. Carbon dioxide effervescence. In the third reaction, we see how carboxylic acids react with alkalis. Carboxylic acids, because the word acid is there, they contain hydrogen ions. Now, alkalis are substances which contain OH negative ions in their aqueous solutions. Now, actually this reaction is between hydrogen ion and OH negative ions. When carboxylic acids react with alkalis, two things are produced. Carboxylic acids react with alkalis to produce salts and water. This is how it happens. This ethanoic acid, I have taken ethanoic acid over here for the reaction. Always the hydrogen ion is going to go out. That's the nature of carboxylic acid. This hydrogen react with OH over here. When hydrogen react with OH, our first product is obtained, it is H2O. And the second one is going to be a salt. In the salt, we have CH3COO, CH3COO minus. This is sodium hydroxide. So sodium comes and sits next to the carboxylate ion in this manner. If this is ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid, this is sodium ethanoic. Okay. I'll give it two minutes. You see the thing on the screen. First, you give a try. Uh, take a pencil and write down the answers. And then afterwards, I'll give my answers. Take one or two minutes. Get busy with the work now.
Let's see whether you have done the work. Here I will write first the compounds reacting here. This is methanoic acid. And the last compound is propanoic acid. When calcium reacts with methanoic acid, uh, you can figure out the name of the salt produced. Okay, calcium hydroxide is a methanoic acid. Itself. So it should be calcium methanoic. Calcium methanoic. In the second compound, propanoic acid reacts with barium. This B is barium. So the product should be barium propanoic. Barium propanoic. In addition to this, what is there? You know, always in an acid-base reaction, water and salt are produced. So I'll write here H2O plus calcium methanoate. Calcium methanoate is H C O O minus. It has a negative charge. Calcium is having two plus. So there should be two methanoid ions reacting here. So let me write two in front of methanoic acid to balance the chemical equation. And I guess we have, we have two H2. The last one is barium propanoid, the salt produced. Before that, what is produced? Water plus barium propanoid. We write barium. Barium is two plus propanoid is CH3, CH2, COO minus. There should be twice because the propanoid part is twice here. I have to add two in front of this. And I can add two H2 here. This is how carboxylic acids react with alkalis in acid-base neutralization reactions. Uh, you can check your work and do any corrections. In our fourth reaction of carboxylic acids, they react with indicators. Indicators are different substances which give different colors in different pH values. For example, we have litmus solution. You know this very well, litmus solution. Into litmus solution, when you add a bit of acid, you can see a red color. And if you add an alkali into litmus solution, you see blue. So in that manner, Indicators have a specific feature of showing different colors in acidic medium and in alkaline medium. So that idea is um, studied more in this. Since carboxylic acids are weak acids, what's the meaning of weak acids? At the very beginning, I told they dissociate in water partially. And they have a pH value three to five pH values are three to six. If the pH value is one, two, and three, they are strong acids. But carboxylic acids have, are, are weak acids. They have pH value three to four, three to six. Actually, it should be four, five, six. Uh, I have prepared a table uh, to show how carboxylic acid give different colors uh, in different pH values, uh, different indicators. See, this is something to uh, a general thing. If you consider different indicators like phenolphthalein, methyl orange, and bromothymol blue, these are actually very, very important indicators. You are supposed to know because we have in paper four titration questions. In titration questions, uh, you will see these indicators are used to find the endpoint. And these indicators 
give different colors in acidic medium. For example, phenolphthalein, when an acid is added, it has no color. Phenolphthalein has no color in acidic medium. But methyl orange gives a red orange color. Bromothymol blue gives a yellow color in alkaline medium. However, there is something called universal indicator. This universal indicator is not actually a single indicator. It's a mixture of indicators. Because it is a mixture of indicators, it can give different colors in different pH values. If you take pH value 1, to 14, according to the pH value, you get an array of colors, beautiful colors out there. But because carboxylic acids have pH, I said, let's say four to six, four, five, six. For pH value four, five, six, this indicator color shows four, five, six, orange. Yellow is also there, but mainly carboxylic acids show orange color, in universal indicator. If the acid you are testing is strong, very strong, then pH will be one, two, three, color will be red. If the solution is neutral, color is green. For example, if you add some universal indicator into distilled water, you get green. If you add universal indicator into sodium hydroxide, probably a strong alkali, you can see a very dark purple color. So with indicators, carboxylic acids show different colors. You can see these colors in detail. Please uh, make a note of these things and keep them for further studies. The last reaction under carboxylic acid is esterification. In these reactions, carboxylic acids participate with, uh, uh, in a reaction with alcohols, giving a special type of compound called esters. Before we go to this ester lesson, I think it's better to discuss about all the reactions we have discussed under alcohol so far to make a summary. So this is a summary of the alcohol reactions we discussed today. Let's see. The carboxylic acid is R, C, O, OH. If this compound is reacted with sodium or sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, How will carboxylic acid react? A similar thing happens with sodium. Carboxylic acid goes to O minus and Na plus. With sodium carbonate, again, we get a change in carboxylic acid to make this carboxylic ion and sodium plus comes. With sodium hydroxide also, we have R, CO, O minus, Na plus. In addition, with sodium, you can see hydrogen gas production. With sodium carbonate, you can see carbon dioxide plus water formation. With sodium hydroxide, you can see the formation of water. It's better if you take down this as a summary of carboxylic acid reactions. Uh, up here, we can have another reaction, esterification reaction. We have not discussed that so far. Uh, however, you can have this drawn as a summary. Uh, please make sure to leave a blank to complete the work afterwards. I can give uh, maybe one minute to copy down this.
we have come to the last reaction of carboxylic acids, the reaction with alcohols. There are a few things to realize in this. Carboxylic acids react with alcohols at the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. It is not just sulfuric acid, it is concentrated sulfuric acid. So in the exam, you must definitely write concentrated sulfuric acid. You have heat also. A condensation reaction occurs. You don't know much about condensation reactions now. For the time being, you remember, esterification is a condensation mm. reaction to produce sweet-smelling esters. Hey, this is interesting. Sweet-smelling esters. It means when carboxylic acids react with alcohols, you get a compound called esters. These esters have sweet smell. Water molecules are produced as byproducts. And let me see what these condensation reactions are. Condensation reactions are reactions where two molecules join together, making a larger molecule at the same time, removing or eliminating a small molecule such as water. The following diagram shows how propanoic acid reacts with ethanol to produce an ester. Okay, what are we going to react here? Propanoic acid and ethanoic acid. Before you go to the diagram, I think it's better if I explain to you how exactly this reaction happens. Do you remember the reaction? Reaction is between propanoic acid, I'll write the word here, propanoic acid plus ethanol. I'll write the ethanol formula first, CH3, CH2OH. Propanoic acid is CH3, CH2, COOH. To discuss the reaction, I will use this um, propanoic acid and ethanol in their uh maybe partly displayed formula. I'll go to propanoic acid first. Propanoic acid is CH3, CH2, COOH. And then ethanol, I can I can draw ethanol molecule in this manner, but I will show the ethanol molecule in the other way around. CH3 here on the left hand side, but here I'll write CH2 on the right hand side. CH3, CH2, it is drawn from left to right, but I will draw it from right to left. After CH3, we get CH2. After CH2, we get OH. Write OH in the reverse order. For this reaction, we have to have concentrated sulfuric acid. That's a catalyst. Concentrated sulfuric acid, you must remember these things. And heat is also needed. Then propanoic acid comes closer to ethanol. You can see the functional group of propanoic acid and functional group of ethanol are closer together. When they come closer, OH group of carboxylic acid and H part of alcohol, they join together. They join together and go out as a water molecule. And then another thing happens. I'll copy this and bring over here. All right. Now what happens? OH of carboxylic acid and hydrogen of, hydrogen of alcohol, they have gone away as a water molecule. Now, there is an 
empty nature in between the molecules. Earlier, there was OH here. Earlier, there was OH here. Now it has disappeared. There was OH here. It also has disappeared. So this oxygen here needs a bond. You know, oxygen makes two bonds, but now only one bond is there. This carbon has to have four bonds, but there are only three bonds. Now, this hydrogen is in need of a bond. This oxygen is also in need of a bond. So these, partic uh, these particles having a requirement to make bonds will come closer and join together. Now, this is a molecule we identify as ester molecule. This is an ester molecule. These esters have sweet smells, okay? It's an ester molecule where you can see in the middle, this C double bond O and this oxygen, they join together. Through that join or connection, ester has been formed. Therefore, we say this connection over here, COO, it is called the ester linkage. This is the ester linkage. I told this ester esterification reactions or ester formation reactions are condensation reactions. Do you remember that? This is a condensation reaction. Condensation reaction. Uh, I just read out a sentence also to explain why this is called condensation reaction. It's because two molecules join together making a big molecule. Two molecules join together making, actually I can call it a bigger molecule. See, propanoic acid here. ethanoic acid here. When they join together, you get a very big molecule. And to allow these molecules together and to make this ester linkage, one water molecule goes out. Therefore, this is, an, con this is a condensation reaction. I'll write the meaning of condensation reaction again, even though uh, you saw it earlier. In a condensation reaction, Two molecules join together, two molecules join together, making a larger molecule at the same time, at the same time. Eliminating a small molecule. This is actually an in detail explanation of esterification reaction. If you think within a matter of just one minute, if you want to take down anything, any note, you can have time, just one minute. If you take a screenshot of this, I can go to the next part of the lesson. Okay. Let's, let's try to find out how ethanoic acid and butanol are going to react 
uh, in an esterification reaction. Um, to do this work, I will take ethanoic acid um, structure drawn in this manner. C, CH3, C, O, OH. This reacts with butanol. I'll just draw the butanol over here first. Butanol is CH3, CH2, 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 OH. But to construct the ester linkage, I will uh, ester molecule, I will invert this molecule and write next to ethanoic acid. How? H O CH2, 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 CH3. Because it's a condensation reaction, as I told earlier, this OH of carboxylic acid OH of carboxylic acid react with H of alcohol. And what is produced? H2O molecule. And then the two molecules are going to join together. First, I will take CH3, CO, and it connects to this oxygen, I will take a different color for this so that you can see clearly how the two compounds have reacted. Oxygen, CH2, 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 CH3. When ethanoic acid reacts with butanol, the compound form is called Butyl, butyl ethanoid, butyl ethanoid. When you write an ester name, first we have to see the alcohol part. This is butanol. If it's butanol in the ester molecule, first part should be butyl coming from alcohol. And ethanoic acid, we know ethanoid. Butyl ethanoid. This is butyl ethanoid. Likewise, we'll go to the next one. Methanoic acid and propanol. I will draw the carboxylic acid first. Methanoic acid. Methanoic acid is having only one carbon. So it is C O O H. Methanoic acid. This methanoic acid reacted propanol. I'll write the propanol structure here. CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. But to understand how this reaction occurs, uh, for the reaction, I will take the propanol in the other way around. Now, first you write OH first, but it is written as HO. CH2, CH2, CH3. How is the reaction happening now? The OH of the carboxylic acid react with hydrogen of the alcohol and produce a water molecule. And the remaining parts of the molecules are going to join together. H, C, O. This is coming from carboxylic acid and from alcohol side we have oxygen, CH2, CH2, CH3. Now the name, methanoic acid and propanol. Alcohol is propanol. So we start the ester lesson, uh, ester name by writing propyl. 
propanol gives propyl group, propyl methanoid. Propyl methanoid. Observe this clearly. And if you want to make a knot, you can knot it down correctly. If you understood this uh, esterification lesson, uh, you can write down this reactant combination, propandiol and ethanoic acid. Try to construct the structure, propendiol and ethanoic acid. And afterwards, ethanoic acid and ethanol. What's the ester form? You can figure it out and do the work. And afterwards, I have some more questions. See the first one. Do the structures and names of esters produced when the following substances react together? Methanoic acid and ethanol. First, you draw the methanoic acid and then draw the ethanol in the inverted manner. Show the removal of water molecule and draw the structure of the ethanol, uh, the ester. Second one. Ethanoic acid is reacting with butanol. Again, draw the structure of ethanoic acid. Draw the structure of butanol and invert it to bring the functional groups together and show the reaction. And next one, propanoic acid. Propanoic acid react with ethanol. Butanol react with methanoic acid. Pentanoic acid react with propanol. In each case, you can get an ester. This is your practice session please try to do the structure of the esters. Why do we talk about these esters? These esters are not very soluble in water. They are not water soluble. They are a bit oily. And these esters are used for some uh, applications. One is they are used as solvents. Example, nail polish removers. When you go to cosmetic shop, if you ask for nail polish remover, think that you are going to buy esters. And also, they are used as food flavor. And afterwards, uh, lesson goes on talking about fats and oils. I think uh, I had to talk about the, the last part of esters in the next lesson. So please... Um, go through this lesson very well. Lesson is not very difficult. Uh, you have to do the homework today itself, do the practice in today itself. You will find this carboxylic acid lesson is very, very easy. Okay, uh, thank you very much for coming for the lesson. See you in the next lesson.